Hello, this is Scott Carpenter. Today I wanted to start my series on the Sasquatch Awareness Project and uh, we're going to start off with an introduction and then I'm going to go through uh, the different subjects uh, that concern the book and my website and uh, focus on those as, uh, as we go through the uh, days ahead. So in general I want to do an uh, introduction to the book. Let me get it here. And that's the uh, Sasquatch Awareness Project. And uh, I started this to help people. That's the bottom line. There were so many people having issues that were emailing me and, and reaching out. And it was obvious that uh, there were many, many people that were had issues after having a Sasquatch encounter or had an ongoing situation. And they had no one to turn to. Law enforcement wouldn't take them serious. Uh, uh, the, their wildlife uh, recreation associations wouldn't take them serious and really no one, you know, very few official uh, government agencies would take uh, any of this very seriously and so uh, people had uh, real uh, concrete uh, issues uh, dealing with the Sasquatch and the aftermath of having a uh, encounter, especially those who had never had uh, knowledge, foreknowledge of the subject at all. I'd never heard of the Sasquatch, you know, and it just in passing really didn't even believe they existed. And then, boom, an encounter happens, or someone buys a, a piece of property that's their dream, uh, you know, it's their dream home, their dream place, and next thing you know, the, uh, there's Sasquatch activity that's turned this uh, dream place into a nightmare for them. So I started the uh, Sasquatch Awareness Project. So the Sasquatch Awareness Project came about then uh, with the help of my friends uh, David Plytis and Steve Ishtal. And before COVID, we were, you know, I was especially talking to Steve about uh, trying to get something together. And then of course COVID hit, and you know a lot of the preliminary plans we made just weren't, you know, weren't going to be able to happen. So. Uh, I already had the Sasquatch Awareness uh, Project uh, website up and uh, was kind of working on that. And it, we just kind of went our own ways. There was no way to really collaborate, you know, with COVID. So uh, Steve did his thing and I've done mine and David Pilates has done his. But, with you know, all of us kind of, even though we're working independently, we're all working in the same direction with the same goals. And that's to help people and to help people uh, cope and and uh, be able to enjoy the outdoors again and uh, not uh, not live in fear of these creatures and uh, be able to enjoy themselves especially out in the outdoors and, and deal with uh, the uh, PTSD and other things that uh, accompany uh, an experience uh, like a Sasquatch experience. So the, we're going to be covering in the next few weeks um, you know what is a Sasquatch Bigfoot? I'm going to go over uh, the, uh, the characteristics and what they look like, uh, their physical attributes, those things. And then I'm going to get look at, uh, we're going to look at uh, what does the Sasquatch look like. And then we're going to go over the signs of their presence in case uh, uh, you're one of those uh, people that own property or land and you're having weird uh, occurrences happen, then you can identify that a Sasquatch is uh, set up shop or in the area, or even if not, if you're just someone who hikes and camps, uh, you'll be aware of the obvious signs that the Sasquatch are in the area, so you can be aware. We're also going to uh, discuss the uh, topic of are the Sasquatch dangerous? And, uh, you know, my opinion is they can be, and uh, they're something not to uh, be taken lightly. And uh, I'll dive deep in more of that as we get into the subject. Uh, I also wanted, will touch on the paranormal and supernatural uh, aspects of the Sasquatch phenomenon and go over those things that can and do occur when uh, you encounter a Sasquatch and uh, if you pursue them and uh, things like the hitchhiker effect if, if you're actively pursuing them and trying to investigate them. There's also the other uh, cryptids that come with this and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't cover that uh, things like orbs, dogmen, 
uh, other high strangeness. Uh, sometimes there's uh, Bigfoot and UFO sightings. Sometimes there's uh, orbs and Bigfoot. So it's uh, it can get pretty crazy, and uh, it needs to be addressed because uh, you know it's something that happens, especially for those who have tried to investigate and then we're kind of figuring out I don't know if I want to do this or not because of all the craziness. Then we're going to go over uh, what to do you know, when you have an unwanted uh, vis uh, Sasquatch uh, visitations or you have them on your property and, and it's unwanted and you don't want them on your property. What are some of the uh, both uh, practical and spiritual things that you can do uh, to get the uh, Sasquatch to at least back off and leave you alone and hopefully uh, get a situation where you can live and uh, not be harassed or bothered by them constantly. I also want to deal with uh, those who have the um, desire to go out and if research you're going them. out and investigating them and aggressively researching them there are some unintended consequences and as I mentioned before there's the hitchhiker effect that uh, that can get you followed home and uh, other supernatural odd things can happen around your Another house. Another thing we want to cover will be a special warning to children and women. Uh, a Sasquatch especially around women and children seem to show themselves more uh, they seem more uh, drawn to them. Uh, most of the time, a daylight encounter with a Sasquatch, where the Sasquatch show is comes out and everybody can see them, is is a situation where you have a woman and a child, or a child only, or a woman only. So I thought it, it's. It, I think it's good to go over uh, the encounters and, and what to expect if one happens and how to handle it. It's also uh, going to talk about uh, camping and what uh, we found uh, works well and repellent for the Sasquatch if you're camping, what to do, how to set up your camp, uh, the, uh, the technical aspects of like trail cameras and other things you can do to kind of help uh, at least put a fence around your camp and keep the Sasquatch back so you don't have to, you don't have to deal with uh, an encounter. Uh, during your uh, your camping outing or any outdoor outing, where you're camping or, or in in the woods, especially if you're in an area that you know has a high population of Sasquatch and there's a lot of encounters in that area, a lot of reports. And the final thing we're going to discuss is you're not the only one. And uh, I think it's important that those who've had these encounters don't feel isolated. Many times, people that have encounters with a Sasquatch feel isolated because they don't know anyone else that has had an encounter. Uh, lots of times, you know, that they're the only one in their families that maybe do outdoors things. They've never researched the subject. They don't have a clue, you know, what is this thing? And so I think it's important for people to understand that you're, they're not the only one. And there is, uh, there are people, there's like the Sasquatch Awareness Project and others that you can write and that you can go to the resources out there. Uh, to reach out and to talk to people that have had uh, similar experiences and to uh, learn from that and, uh, and help you cope with what you're dealing with. So definitely going to talk about that and hopefully over the next few weeks uh, we can uh, go over these different topics concerning the Sasquatch Awareness Project and, and we can uh, get those resources out to everyone and uh, educate as many as we can. And that's the goal was uh, to educate and uh, and to help people I wanted to read real quick the mission statement that I have for the Sasquatch Awareness Project in closing and uh, the mission statement is to educate inform and increase the awareness of the general public and outdoor enthusiasts from all walks of life that the creature known as Sasquatch Bigfoot does exist Assist and support those who have had encounters with the Sasquatch by providing a forum where questions, concerns, and experiences can be discussed without the fear of criticism, ridicule, or condemnation. Assist those 
who have had their lives disrupted by an encounter with the Sasquatch and help people better cope with the experience and restore as much normalcy as possible in their lives. So that's our goals and uh, we're going to start this series and I, I think it'll be educational and I think uh, that it'll be beneficial to very many people. So God bless everyone. Be safe out there and until next time, this is Scott Carpenter.